What's up, everyone? Steven Richards back once more for another video on the wonderful flat Earth. Today we're going to be talking about gravity and relativity and refraction. So let's just get right on into this one today. As a representer of the flat Earth theory, you need to be very particular and careful of the way, the order, and how you present this topic. Basically, just know your facts, know what you're talking about, and have proofs to back up what you are saying. No, I'm not saying that my way of presenting and defending the topic is 100% the way to do it, and everyone else is wrong, but to me, this would be the most effective way to at least get someone thinking about this topic without thinking it's total bullcrap and dismissing it before you can even make your second point. I am also not saying that this will work 100% of the time. If you are a flat earther, such as myself, you all know the type of people that resist this topic and how close-minded they are, which I guess is natural. Like other flat earthers, including myself, have said before, it is normal to resist and try to debunk it at first. If someone says, hey John, by the way, the earth is flat, and John carries on with his day, and then John starts to believe the earth is flat without doing any research or debunking or anything, there's probably something wrong with John. Now, if I were to try and prove the globe, these would probably be my two go-to points without using NASA. We're going to see how accurate these go-to points are, and how easily or if they can even be debunked. Which, don't worry. Oh, they will. In no particular order, I would use gravity and relativity, and then refraction to try and prove the globe. But before you can prove, present, or defend anything, you must be able to prove what you're presenting is accurate, accurate and real with actual facts and proofs. Now, this is not based on any poll or anyone else's opinions but my own. To back up a little, I was first introduced to the Flat Earth topic around four years ago. I have been on the side of Flat Earth for a good part of two and a half years, and I've had many discussions, debates, and such online, in person, whatever, for the past two years. So, now, I picked these two particularly because these are two that I feel get thrown around the most. And I feel that most people don't know what the fuck they are. So, what I'm going to do is help us understand what they are, break them down, and uh, pretty much debunk them. So, carrying on, gravity and relativity. Now, I know these are two separate things, but one cannot be used or even exist for that matter without the other. How do I know this? Well, it's simple. The theory of gravity can only be proven possible with the assist of the theory of relativity. With capital T's, by the way, theory. The definition of gravity is the force that attracts a body towards the center of the Earth or towards any other physical body having mass. For most purposes, Newton's law of gravity will apply, with minor modifications to take the general theory of relativity into account. The definition of relativity is a theory developed by Albert Einstein, which says that the way that anything except light moves through time and space depends on the position and movement of someone who is watching. Gravity is most accurately described by the general theory of relativity which describes gravity not as a force but as a consequence of the curvature of space-time caused by the uneven distribution of mass and energy and resulting in gravitational time dilation where time lapses more slowly in a stronger gravitational potential. Now I was never a science nerd in school, thank God, but I will not claim to be an expert on this matter. But if I were to take a shot at this without completely butchering it, I would have to say this explains the phenomena where the further you get away from Earth's gravitational pull, the slower time lapses due to the, due to the decreasing effects gravity has on space-time, if Earth was actually 
a globe. So if you're going to use gravity and relativity as your go-to defense of the globe, you're going to need to know everything that I just stated in its entirety in every word's definition. To support the weird behavior of light or how it works in space, another thing was theorized. Time dilation. To keep the speed of light constant, Einstein made this time as relative. Apparently, different observers or clocks measure different times in the same duration in space, depending on their relative motion. Clocks apparently run slower, or in other words, time dilates as one moves faster, and hence the speed of light remains constant. Also, time apparently runs slower, or time dilates near massive objects. Another absurdity which came out of the general relativity that is there is no such thing as gravitational force or attraction. Heavy objects like stars apparently curve or wrap the space-time around them and this wrapping of space-time is responsible for the perceived gravitational effects. Apparently planets do not go around the sun or apples do not fall from the tree to the ground. Instead, all these travel in straight lines in the curved space-time. This curved space-time gives us the illusion of planets going around the sun and apples falling to the earth. The point that I am getting at is that if you use gravity as your proof the earth is a globe, you have to put a lot of faith into these theories provided by globe enthusiasts who were Freemasons. Newton, Einstein, Copernicus. All Freemasons. These are very untrustworthy people, ladies and gentlemen. Masons are the scientific mechanism to the New World Agenda. Jesuits controlled the religious system through the Vatican, but both bowed down to the Zionists who are the gatekeepers of all the money in the world. So, to use gravity as your proof, you have to trust the word of the biggest liars in the world, also known as NASA, whose higher-ups like people on the ISS, people on the board of directors, and all astronauts are Masons. And better yet, you have to trust that these untestable theories work the way they do. And you can't disagree with their answer because that's how science works. And what I'm saying is, as members of the general public, we don't have authorization to use these instruments that NASA's claim to use to measure space-time. Basically, just be careful who you trust. Like I've said in prior videos, which I stole from Jaren, thanks by the way, don't trust men. Don't trust what I say. Simply just research it. Moving on to the next, which would be refraction. Refraction is defined as the change in direction of propagation of a wave, sound and light for example, due to its change in its transmission medium. And for those who don't know what a transmission medium is, it is a material substance such as a solid, liquid, gas, or plasma that can propagate energy waves. This next quote it's from Dr. Samuel Robotham, Earth is Not a Globe, 2nd edition, page 174. Quote, in the Times newspaper of Monday, October 16, 1854, an account to Her Majesty visit to Great Grimsby from Hull. The following paragraph occurs. There was a tension first naturally, naturally directed to the gigantic tower which rises from the center pier to the height of 300 feet and can be seen 60 miles out at sea. The 60 miles, if nautical, and this is always understood when referring to distances at sea, would make 70 statute miles, which to the fall of 
eight inches belongs and as all observers at sea are considered to be made at the elevation of 10 feet above the water for which four miles must be deducted from the whole distance 66 statute miles will remain the square of which multiplied by eight inches gives us the decline towards the tower of 2904 feet deducting this from the altitude of the tower which is 300 feet we obtain the startling conclusion that the tower should be at the distance at which it should no at which it's visible more than 2600 2, feet below the horizon now indoctrinated naysayers will often retort that the light refraction off the water's surface could account for such the phenomena to begin with the idea that we cannot differentiate between the refracted light of something and the thing itself is preposterous but even assuming we could surveyors general allowance for refraction is only one twelfth the altitude of the object observed making it a completely implausible explanation using the previous example 2600 feet divided by 12 is 206 which subtracted from 2600 leaves us with 2384 feet that the tower should have remained below the horizon something else you can drop on a globalist who is using refraction as an explanation or proof the earth is a globe using quantum mathematics may be useful but I would rather use spherical trig to prove the 8 inches per mile squared is the curvature regardless if the 25,000 miles of Earth's circumference is accurate or not. To prove and or back up the claim of 8 inches per mile squared, wiki search Bedford level experiment. I would then tell them to drive to the beach because we all know beaches are at sea level and then drive six miles up or down the coast with a pair of astronomy binoculars using a lighthouse as their source basically go to the beach spot the lighthouse go six miles up or down the coast and then spot that same lighthouse again there should be a 24 foot drop and out of the line of sight will be a lighthouse and the distance there are at of six miles but of course there will be zero curvature and then we'll easily see the base of the lighthouse proving there is zero curvature to earth not this fake shit on the screen there is no curvature to earth so I've got one more for you how is it possible to view Catalina, Catalina Island from Newport Beach in California. We should not see the base of the mountain, yet we do, as Newport from Catalina is 32.3 miles. This should be an impossibility if the Earth was truly a ball, and yet we see it daily. So this is going to wrap up this video. Once again, my email is scuba2114 at gmail.com. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, contact me there. Like I said before, don't trust me. Don't trust anyone else. Just trust yourself. Trust your inner gut. You can believe what you want to believe. And I believe this earth is flat. I would like to thank Josie Taylor for sharing some of his wonderful knowledge with me. Once again, thank you, everyone, and have a great day.